Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lee Van Hussein. I am a first year PhD student at the University of Washington studying electrical and computer engineering. So to give a little bit of background about, you know, my journey to electrical and computer engineering, how I kind of got into UW, the path to a PhD program, um, it really all starts, I think, in elementary when I had first um, been involved in this after school club that was trying to get, you know, low income minority students uh, interested in STEM. So we were able to build things like audio amplifiers, FM radios, uh, and different, different types of circuits really overall. And I think that really sparked my interest in, in terms of getting started with electronics. So fast forward to the future, I got involved in a program that many of you might be familiar with, it's known as Running Start. And I was taking uh, classes both at the community college that would count for high school credit. And eventually I transferred to the University of Washington where I got my bachelor's of science in electrical engineering. And I continued on with a, a PhD program, which is where I am today. Um, what really interests me about electrical engineering is really the wide scope of you know, how much you can really do with it. If you want to be an electrical engineer, you're not limited to one skill set or one focus. You could be working in power. You could be working in photonics and optics. You could be working on computer engineering and computer design. Um, the wide different range of versatility within, uh, within this field is something that really attracted me. Um, a lot of times, some people might have some doubts or they might have some, uh, some hesitations when it comes to joining a program. And it's just really right for me. Am I limiting myself if I, if I choose to go this route? Well, the thing is, if you choose a, a field that basically you know, develops a wide range of skills, something like electronics or electrical engineering, for example, well, the thing is that the job prospects and the type of work that you could be doing is really, um, it's really up to you at that point because you're, you're developing multiple skills. And that's really the most important thing. Um, you shouldn't really look at school or university as something that will get you one type of job. What you should really be looking at is developing skills and becoming uh, somebody who's really able to learn and navigate different terrains so, and in doing so you're going to find that uh, you're not going to be limited to one specific job requirement the good thing about stem is that uh, you're able to, to do that for a wide different range of fields um, and just because you study electrical engineering doesn't necessarily mean that that's all you have to do at that point you're, you've developed some skills and different interests to really go into a, a wide range of different careers um, you'd be surprised to know that there are many people that got their masters in electrical engineering or they're specializing in a focus or a type of degree but they're working as patent um, patent agents or patent attorneys uh, on the, the side of law, basically. Um, but they're really able to bring that technical edge with them to a field that many might not consider uh, initially. Um, so like I mentioned, I was at Running Start. I was at Highline College before I transferred to the University of Washington as a Running Start student. I stayed an extra year to complete some prerequisite classes like physics, uh, multivariable calculus, uh, and a circuits class. Um, but you know, oftentimes people will see somebody and they'll be like, "Oh, he's so and so is a PhD student, or so and so, you know, transferred to the University of Washington." You know, must have been easy for them, right? Um, but oftentimes, you know, you'll find that it's uh, there's a lot of hurdles and things that you, know, you have to kind of get past to, to get to that point. Uh, and it was basically the same for me as well. So at Highline College, like I mentioned, I was a running start student. The first quarter, things had went really well. Um, I thought that I'd learned the system and, and, and adjusted, but I quickly found that you know. Taking the finals for a pre-calc one class, not studying for it, not really preparing for it, that would really be the trigger point. That would really be the point for me to, after getting that final grade and seeing that you know, I tanked the final, you know, I have to change these habits, right? I have to, I have to do something different if I really want to succeed. You know? I'm not going to stop because I had been so, you know, adamant on getting a STEM degree and this was my passion to to graduate electrical engineering degree. Um, I knew that that wasn't going to stop me from from getting uh, what I was looking for. So there were so many different resources and people um, you know, that I can't even name because there have been so many things that have helped me get to the path that I am today. Um, but things like the Math Resource Center, um, the Mesa Center, really developing that community and finding similar minded people with similar interests to study with and work with and struggle with, these things really helped me. Going to office hours, as cliche as that sounds, um, being able to talk with professors uh, on a deeper level uh, to the material that was being conveyed in class, all of these things really helped me you know, get to where I am today. And, you know, it's, it's good to struggle because this shows you where you can adapt. It shows you where you can change and grow. And if everything, you know, was easy, then, then everybody would have STEM degrees. Um, something else that I'd like to mention is like getting involved, like outside of, uh, outside of, you know, just academics, right? To just go home and study and then rinse and repeat. Um, this doesn't really make somebody a well-rounded engineer or, uh, you know, academic or whatever it is that you're seeking. Getting involved with other people in, in organizations uh, and societies is super helpful in finding people that share similar interests, but you know, you can also help inspire other communities once you get past that point as well. Um, 
National Society of Black Engineers at Highland was, was a critical community that really helped me get to where I am. Finding people that were you know, also black engineers that you know, had different interests. Uh, being able to work with those people was something that I found was, was very beneficial. Um, so get involved, I would say. Uh, find people that share similar interests, whether it's in like a physics, physics study group or a physics society you know, or a physics club, a computer science club. All of these things, you know, they can really help, you know, not only find people that have super interest, but it can really develop a sense of community that's going to, to transcend beyond Highline College. You find people that you transfer with and take classes with. Having that kind of community is really, really helpful. There's some things that I wish people had told me when I was a student. Um, you know, when you're in the context of, I'm just trying to get my degree, I'm trying to work, and trying to just kind of get out, right? You know, sometimes it's really easy to, to, to relax. And, just take it easy because um, assuming that you're in good health and things are well, right? You really have the rest of your life to work and, and, and get these things out, at least for many of us, right? Now, circumstances are different for different people. But I would say that it's really important to just kind of put things in a context and understand that things will work out and that all you can really do is to try your best. Um, if you're not doing that, then that, that's a very different story, right? But if you're trying your best and you're putting in the hours and you're, you're staying committed to what it is that you're really trying to see, then I can almost guarantee that you're going to, at the end of the finish line, you're going to get there. You're going to find what you're looking for. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's in the midst of a global pandemic. And at that point, it's like, I got to find a job immediately. I got to figure out what, I got to figure out how to, you know, get my degree and graduate, get a job immediately and figure out how to get past this, right? But you fast forward two years and you see that, you know, what's the difference you know, between six months or three months looking for a job? or, you know, networking and, and trying to develop these different skills, you'll find that, you know, time really flies. And you just have to roll with it. You have to roll with these punches because that's just life. Um, so I would, I would advise many of you, if not all of you, right, to put things into that context, to try your best, to network and connect with people, you know, that are going to benefit you, not only at Highland, but people that you'll have as friends beyond. And you just wait the, and then see where the wind takes you. And you will be successful in your endeavors if you do so. I wish you guys all the best. I mean, just one example of many of the people that went from Highline to the university uh, through transferring and without the support of many people, you know, uh, this certainly wouldn't be possible. I wish you guys all the best in your academic endeavors, and I hope that I can be a resource um, for the next generation of STEM scholars.